Good morning. It's Prairie Plant Girl here. And today is one of my favorite days. It's planting day. And not just planting in my little grow room, but actually outside. You can hear the birds are chirping, the sun is out. And I'm gonna get some of my brassicas in the ground. And because they're brassicas, I have all my netting to go over the beds. Uh, but there's some plants that are definitely ready to go out. So I'm in uh, Saskatchewan, Canada, and I have about four weeks left until my average last frost date, but the brassicas don't mind at all. In fact, they've been hanging out in my cold frame um, and just enjoying the cool weather as much as they can here because it's too hot in the house for them to really be happy. Uh, if you're new to brassicas, they like uh, a little bit warmer temperatures to germinate, but then they prefer something cooler, like around 15 Celsius or even a little bit cooler to grow in. So they're definitely a cool season crop and our weather goes from winter to summer really fast. So I need to get these planted so they have time to mature before it gets too hot for them. Let's go find those plants. And don't worry, my garden helper is out here on the job. Hey, Buster. Hi. Hey, Buster. So there's my cold frame. And you can see I have lots of plants out. Um, lots of plants out here ready to, to be planted. Some are just, you know, hardening off. Look at these. Aren't these gorgeous? So that's my cauliflower right there. And I have some cabbage back here. This is some broccoli. So those will be going out today. I have some, some sowings that I've done since those. So those are still waiting uh, to get a little bit more mature and they'll go out later. There's my uh, ranunculus, it's looking great. I also have some kale here. I might get that out today. And I think there's some Brussels sprouts in all of this. I plan to do some Brussels sprouts, so hopefully I can find them. It's brassica day, so I need to grab these up and get them, get them over to the garden. This is actually, flowering kale, cabbage, so I don't want that. This is my cauliflower, a little bit of lettuce. Uh, that'll probably wait another day. My Brussels sprouts aren't that big yet, here they are. So I don't know, we'll see. I'll think about this and see if I wanna put them in the ground. They might just be happier if I just get them planted out. So sure not looking very nice in these little trays here. We'll bring them with us and see. Like I said, I have these other little little cabbage here. Um, I think I have enough that I won't plant these out yet, but um, we'll bring them with us just in case. And these are my onions. So if, uh, if I have time today, I'll get these out. Let's get planting. Okay, so my plan is to put the uh, cauliflower and the broccoli in this bed here that I just all uncovered. And then there's two, there's a bed kind of behind there. Um, and that's where the cabbage is gonna go. And then a little further down the road is where the kale and Brussels sprouts are supposed to go there. So my main goal is the cauliflower and the broccoli right now. I'd like to get the cabbage in. The rest is just bonus. Like I said, I brought the onions out. They actually go in a bed that's kind of in front of me right now. Um, no, I think some of them go in this bed too. I have to look at my garden plan again. So I'm gonna do that real quick and then I'll get the plants placed so we can get them put out here. Okay, so the onions do go there. Good thing I decided to check that again. And I don't have all the varieties of uh, cauliflower and broccoli started that I was thinking in my head that I did. So we'll get started with what I have and that's good. It looks like I started my longer season plants first, knowing that the shorter ones, you know, don't take as long. So I didn't need to start them quite as early and I was shorter on space. So looks like that's what I did this year. So let's get these planted in the ground. Um, I'm going to be planting them. I already prepared this bed. Uh, you may have seen a video. I prepared it with a little bit of lime just to bring the pH down a little bit. Um, and I put some bone meal on this bed about a month ago. 
thinking I'd be planting in it within a week and then cold weather hits so it just has been sitting here but that's okay so I'm uh, just gonna go ahead and get these plants in the ground and then the onions are just supposed to go down along the side and the onions are just grown from seed off of some onions that I let go to seed last year so I have no idea what varieties they are but uh, I'm gonna get this done <laughs> Okay, so I have Freedom, Graffiti, and Cheddar. And uh, my plan is to put the Freedom on one side of the bed, and then the Graffiti and Cheddar down the middle. They take just a little bit longer than the Freedom to mature, so I thought that the ones that are taking longer may as well be in the middle of the bed. I'm gonna go with three rows this year, so I'm just gonna move the Freedom out of the way. And I'm gonna try and go at least a foot, but more like 18 inch spacing on these so this is the uh, graffiti and I'm going to plant them slightly deeper than they were in the pots they won't grow roots or anything from that stage but it'll just make them a little sturdier plants so I think I'll put the one graffiti back in its tray and I'll just do one each graffiti and cheddar for now and then I'll come back in that way if we have you know, bug issues which I tend to have um, flea beetles out here so if they get to be an issue and take out these plants I'll have some backups um, or else I can just plunk them in um, when I have a bit more room. We'll see what I have left with the, once I'm done with the broccoli and I might have a bit of room uh, to put these in, but I wanna leave room for the, uh, the younger plants that won't get planted yet. So these are the freedom and I'm gonna put them just over here. So they're gonna be kind of on an angle. I'll actually have them right at, close to the edge of the bed. I don't wanna go too far out or when they mature, they get hit here and I want to leave room for the, the, the onions but when I <laughs> that didn't make much sense when, when they mature they'll get hit by the cover of the frame when it goes over so I have to be careful that they're not right at the very edge so that I have room to push the leaves out of the way as they get larger um, I'm just going to go about here with this guy And then I also wanted to get some early snowball in here. And I think there was one more, I have a list here. Oh, there's a worm crawling. Yeah, early snowball is the other one. It's only supposed to be a 50 day maturity. So I might even get some seeds and plunk them in um, if I don't have starts in the house going. Uh, it's a little bit cool for seeds, but they will get going if I, if I put them in here, they'll just take longer. So I'll start some seeds, whether it's inside or outside. I'll get some seeds going for that so that I have some. But uh, so yeah, I think I'll just leave these two. I might put one more here. We'll just see how much broccoli I have. Um, but I might put one more of the cheddar in here and then the broccoli will be down at that end. But uh, the graffiti and the cheddar uh, are plants. They take longer, the cauliflower, they take longer to to mature, but they also um, have colored the graffiti. Graffiti is a purple headed cauliflower and the cheddar is a kind of an orangey yellow colored uh, head. And they're not supposed to be bothered as much by um, insects. And I did find that they didn't seem to, to have the same issues as some of my white headed uh, cauliflower do. Um, they're also, I think both of those varieties aren't supposed to need to be blanched, which is when you cover up the head to keep it from blowing and maturing too quickly in the sun. And they're not supposed to need that. Uh, so lots of times I just go through and cover all my heads anyways for my 
cauliflower. I'm out there doing it, so I just do them all and then it's done. So I can't really say how true that claim is, but that's what they say. So now I'm gonna get my broccoli going and I get that done. This shouldn't take me very long. So for the broccoli, it looks like I have uh, Imperial and Gypsy started here. So the Imperial uh, is a little bit longer maturing broccoli and it looks like I have three plants of each. They all wanna come out together. There's the roots on there. Nice plants. So this is the Imperial, like I said, it's a little bit longer to maturing. Oh, there's two in one of these. Um, so I'm gonna put them down the center row. And again, I'm gonna use about the same spacing of about 18 inches. So I'll put this one just a little bit closer here to the edge. You can go a little bit closer with broccoli and cauliflower, just will affect your head size, really. Um, a lot of times that's all I find. As long as they have the nutrients and the water they need, they can be a little bit closer. Okay, so that's the uh, cauliflower and the, the broccoli planted here. The ground is actually quite moist. We received some rain last night and it's supposed to rain again today. Uh, and I've given these a good, um, brassicas like to be nice and uh, tight in their space. So I've actually tried to give them a good push into the ground uh, when I'm planting them here. So I think I'm not worried about air pockets around the roots or anything and uh, I think they'll be they'll be good like this with a little bit of rain we're getting. Like the, the soil is, is quite nice and damp here. So a little bit more rain this afternoon and uh, they'll be really happy. If we don't get that rain, I'll, I'll come in and give them each a really good watering, but I don't think it's gonna be necessary uh, for today. I will make sure that the ground is staying moist around all these plants I plant for the next uh, week for sure. Brassicas do like a good amount of water. Um, cool roots is really important for them so and then I just have the drip tube uh, there's an emitter every 12 inches I'm gonna move this line just a little bit closer now that I know where the plants are so it's running beside them a little bit closer and uh, this one will go in between the rows and I'll do that I didn't work on that side of the bed today but I'll get some more starts like I said I have more starts going of uh, lots of these things so once they're ready to be put out they'll go on that side of the bed and fill in any spaces I have here but this should get me a good start anyways I'll make sure to put the netting back over top and uh, since I do have a lot of trouble with uh, the flea beetles I'll be getting some sticky uh, traps just those little sticky card things and putting them out here under the netting uh, so if any flea beetles have overwintered, I have leaves on this bed. So if any flea beetles overwintered in this bed, uh, and they'll be caught by those traps, hopefully, and do less damage to the plants that way. Um, but yeah, that's all there really is to planting these. So I'm just going to keep on going. The, the cabbage is the exact same way. So I'll just be placing them in the bed. It's actually just right that way, getting them on. And then I'll be putting netting on and moving on to the the kale and the Brussels sprouts. I have a couple of gypsy broccoli and one each of the graffiti and cheddar um, cauliflower left. So that's nice. So if I do need replacements for any reason, I'll have those nice, good sized plants. And you know, after a week, if these have all settled in well, then I'll probably try and squeeze those in, depending on if I have starts of other varieties ready to go out. We'll see how much room I have here. If it's too full, then I'll just give them away to someone who wants them. I'm just going to pop the onions in real quick. When I sow my onions, I just uh, kind of mass sow them. There's, I think, four rows in this tray here. And then I just sprinkle seed down each row. So I'll just see what I can pull out here. Like I said, this was just saved seed. 
so I'm not even sure what these onions will turn out to be but I'd like to get a few in the ground. Onions are another really cold tolerant uh, crop. So get a few of those in here. And I just go kind of like this for my planting distance. So plant here, plant here, that's all I do. And you see it just pulled apart and I'm not worried about hurting the roots or anything. Onions are just so, so resilient, so. That's what they look like there. That bird has a lot to say today. And it's really simple to uh, plant an onion. So you just poke a hole, and drop it down. You don't want to plant them too deep or um, they can have trouble with getting bulbed up. But that's about the only only thing you have to be careful about really when planting your onions so pretty easy peasy so I'll just go through and just put as many as I can fit around the perimeter of the bed and uh, then I'll move on to the cabbage Okay, so I got all those onions. Well, not all those onions. I got onions all the way around that bed there. So I have about three dozen onions. Some were pretty spindly, so we'll see how they do. But the rest I just left in the container and I'll pop them in somewhere else. Onions are great that way. You can just pop them in between pretty much any plant. I don't think there's too many plants they really are a problem for. Um, and they don't need a pollinator, so you don't need to worry like those, those are under netting. It doesn't matter, they don't need a pollinator. So they're just an easy plant, doesn't take up much space and uh, you can pop them in just about anywhere. So now I have my cabbage here and my plan is to get the longer season cabbage across the back of this bed and the uh, ones that mature a bit faster towards the front. This bed is about two feet wide and eight feet long. The other bed I don't think I mentioned is about four feet wide and two and eight feet long. So this is just on the edge of my garden here. Both these beds actually get some shade in the afternoon, which the brassicas are okay with. Uh, but the, uh, the further towards you they come, the more sun they get. Um, the further behind me, you can see the shed back there. So it provides some shade in the afternoon. So, But uh, they'll be all right back here. That'll also help keep it cooler when the weather gets hot. Because some of these cabbage that I'm going to be planting, like the mammoth red rock, need 100 days um, of ideal conditions to mature. So they're gonna take most of my summer. My season's only 110 frost free days. I'm starting about 30 days early. So it's gonna take most of that time probably for them to reach full maturity. So I just have a note here with the days to maturity on these plants. I need to find my gloves. So what do I have here? We'll leave these to the end because they're just a little bit smaller and see how much space we have. So it looks like I maybe just have I put one of each variety it looks like in these trays so I will likely use those others so there's a mammoth red rock so like I said that's a hundred days and I'll probably put it more towards the middle of the bed here this is a gunma this is an, about 83 days so there's the stone head Caterina is about 45 days. Taiwan is 73. And this is Copenhagen Market and it's 65. So I'll put those across there and then I have a couple of Mammoth Red Rock and Caterina. So I'll put those at the front of the Red Rock at the back and the Caterina at the front here. And that should fill up this bed. So that's nice. Get those cabbages going here. The cabbage are the same way, they get planted the same way as the uh, broccoli and 
cauliflower, so we're just gonna pop them in again, leaving about 18 inches. I'll probably leave a little bit more space for the mammoth red rock because it, it's a, a big cabbage. And I'll just be going about six inches in from the edge and that should leave about a foot down the middle and I'll try and kind of alternate these a little bit so they're not right one in front of the other. And I prepared this bed the same way as I did the other bed with the uh, lime and uh, bone meal. So it's all ready, ready to go. And I have the drip, drip line in here as well. So let's see, we'll get these front and then I'll figure out where I want that red rock to kind of go in there. Like I said, this bed gets some shade in the afternoons and I can feel when I dug down that, this one, that down about this far, there's ice underneath here. But uh, the rest of the soil is definitely warm. Like it doesn't even feel cold to my hands, maybe coolish, but not cold. So it should still be fine for these plants here, but this drip tape is gonna need some work. I obviously cut it too long here or something. I'll deal with that later, so. Uh, and the same with the the colored um, cauliflower, the mammoth red rock is a purpley red um, cabbage and it's not supposed to be bothered by the, uh, the cabbage moths and things as much as the other others are. So this is a couple of Katerina. These are supposed to be really nice tight small heads. Um, so I actually can plant them a little bit closer together and uh, they're supposed to mature really quickly. I've never had tried them. This is my first year with these, this variety here, um, but they're supposed to be really good for market gardeners because they mature quickly into a nice size head that uh, more it'll appeal to more people. So to find a stake for this, and then I'll get my cover on. I'll have to get my wheelbarrow out of the way too. There, cabbages are in. Okay, so the cabbage is all planted in here and uh, I'm gonna put a bit of netting on just to make sure nothing, it's pretty early in season yet, I don't know if there's any butterflies or anything, but it also helped keep any hungry birds from pecking at it or anything and then it's in place when I need it and I don't forget. But uh, these are really good nets, these little tunnels and uh, the, the net I put on the, the, the cauliflower and the broccoli is really good too. So if you're looking for nets, I'd highly recommend these. I'll put links in the description for you if you're interested at all. Um, but these have stood up for years and easy to use and they keep the bugs out. I have three kinds of kale here. I have red Russian, uh, dinosaur, and uh, dwarf green. the Brussels sprouts have Jade Cross and Long Island. So this is my third year I think growing Brussels sprouts and I still have never gotten a really good harvest. So I'm still trying to figure these guys out. And these plants don't look like they did much yet so hopefully they do better in the ground. That was the Jade Cross. They're really looking like they need some nutrients.
I'm going to get another um, covering to just cover over these plants as well. This one isn't quite as good as, um, quite as fine of a mesh, so it's not as good for things like flea beetles, but still is definitely good for keeping off uh, butterfly moss or anything like that. So this brand sells several different uh, covers for their, their tunnels. So the yellow one was one of them. It's a lot finer mesh. And this is just a, a little bit looser mesh, um, but still, like I said, good for like cabbage butterflies and that, just not like flea beetles as much. So there, I got the planting that I wanted to... Bird fight over there. So I got the planting done that I wanted to get done today, so that's great. Uh, got those brassicas, you know, where they belong in my garden beds. So thanks for coming along with me for that. And uh, let me know in the comments down below, have you been able to start planting your garden yet? But for me, it started here. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time. Bye.